Hi friends, uh, this is Ankur from FinStudy Club, welcoming viewers to uh, honestly my favorite uh, you know, topic in this particular reading which is the PEG ratio, which is PEG ratio. Uh, well, you know, we have, we have talked about that, you know, necessity is always the mother of innovation and uh, there has been some evolution in the financial matrices that, you know, analysts, stroke valuators have been using to value the companies and every time, you know, a, a furtherance happens, it is always for, you know, kind of a, a more detailed and a meticulous approach. So, we have here a, a ratio called as PEG. This is actually a derivative or a furtherance of a ratio called as P-E ratio. And you understand what you mean by the P-E ratio, the price uh, by earning ratio. It is a relationship of the prevailing price with respect to the underlying earnings. The point is why was P-E developed? And rather than just looking at the price, we brought earnings also into picture and looked at that if on a five dollar earning your price is 40 that means for one dollar of earning the price is eight dollars the same analysis we did and we found out that for one dollar of earning the price prevailing in case of B is 7.3 and therefore my analysis which was select A became select B because of difference in earnings, I put them in the denominator to arrive at a one unit of the earnings. So that's how, you know, I also tend to do in, in general, you know, whenever we talk about the earning per share, the idea was why couldn't, couldn't you compare companies with uh, only the total PAT? The reason being that total PAT would be uh, not a good parameter because of the size. There are different capital structures. So we said, okay, fine. So let's put the number of shareholders in the denominator because that's what creates the size difference. And then we suddenly get a parameter called as earning per share, which is the dollar PAT per one share. So whatever is a differentiating parameter is taken in the denominator and is therefore made one. So this is exactly the point. Here is a differentiating parameter called earnings and I have made that as a one here. So how do you read a P ratio of eight times? It is eight dollars of price per one dollar of earnings and similarly seven point three dollars of price per one dollar of earnings. So while 40 and 60 were not com 160 were not comparable, 8 and 7.3 are comparable because both are at one dollar of earnings. So we said that okay fine let's select B. But then again the question came up and I'll take you back to you know your level one fundamentals and we've also done it in the dividend discount model as to that a justified PE can be translated into you know this particular phrase in which if the growth goes up the PE multiple also go up. So uh, that means growth has a role to play in altering the PE multiple and growth anyways is an assumed number. So it is possible that the growth assumed for company A might be different than growth assumed for company B. So there was another again a need being felt to further this ratios of uh, these ratios of 8.8 and 7.3. So what I did is I took the expected growth out of the formula and put it here. Then I realized that in the valuation of A, I am taking a 5% growth and in the valuation of B, I am taking only 2% of growth, which means to say that eight times is I am expected to pay for $1 of earning if the expected growth is 5%. If let's say I have to equal equalize this parameter, I am going to divide this level by this level. So 8 divided by 5 is 1.6, 7.3 divided by 2 is about 3.65. So how do I read this 1.6? 1.6 dollar of price is justified or should I say is prevailing for one dollar of earning per one unit of growth percentage okay allow me to explain that again 1.6 is the PE multiple per 
वन परसेंट ऑफ ग्रोथ अज्यूम्ड इन द फॉर्मूला सो नाउ बाय दैट आई हैव नॉर्मलाइज द ग्रोथ इज वेल एंड अगेन माई सिलेक्शन पैरामीटर विच वॉज ए देन बिकेम बी बिकॉज ऑफ द पी रेशो अगेन गोज अप टू ए सो ए विल बी फाइनली सिलेक्टेड बिकॉज द ग्रोथ एक्सपेक्टेड यू नो इन ए is uh, 5% and uh, if i normalize that the stock price currently is trading at 1.6 times you know at at a 1% growth that i have assumed into that so uh, you know so so that's that's about p now i'm sure that by looking at this fundamental you must be i mean the thought must be crossing your mind that ke also has a role to play so while we looked at the pe we just normalized earnings while we looked at peg we normalized the earnings as well as growth can there be a ratio can there be a ratio wherein we also normalize the cost of equity answer is who knows maybe after 5 years maybe after a year there is another ratio let's say 10% and 12% to normalize this further that for 1 dollar of risk taken cost of equity is a required risk you know the, the compensation for the risk taken so for every 1 dollar so 1.6 i mean i'm just kind of you know uh, hypothetically talking about so 1.6 divided by 10 so it is going to be 16 and uh, you know it is 3.6 divided by 12 it is roughly 30 so you never know i mean what kind of a ratio kind of uh, comes up so this becomes one of the strengths of pe g that it considers the earnings disparity and the expected growth disparity but it becomes one of the limitations of pg that it does not take into account the cost of equity and that's where you know this particular aspect comes into picture the risk variation the cost of equity variation okay so the again the same point that you can always further that down with whatever number that you have now another aspect here as a drawback of peg is that the relationship between p and g is not linear linear as in for a 1% you know increase it is not going to uh, have a 1% change in your pe so you know, this is a little quadratic here and makes a comparison a little difficult although i don't think that's a very very uh you know practical uh, disadvantage to look at because right now you have access to tools which are very very scientific and advanced so i don't think that is a very you know big way to stop p uh, pg being used so 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 let's just go back to where we had started so peg is a pe 1.6 times per unit i'm talking about the fundamentals of a uh, per 1% of expected growth it is used to compare the companies with different sizes and different growth rates the peg standardizes the pe ratio for stocks which is let's say 1.6 with expected different rates it reveals the multiple that the stock is getting on 1% growth the stocks with lower peg are more attractive obviously the stocks if the price is in the numerator if the price is in the numerator i am writing all the three fundamentals by which you had made a selection so by price you selected a by pe you selected b and again by peg you selected a so if the price is in the numerator then lower the better if you have to buy and higher the better if you have to sell okay but the only thing like we said it is assuming that the risks are similar now imagine p would have been a perfect ratio if both the cost of equity would have been same 12 and 12 so even if you consider this or not consider this so therefore that this would have become my ultimate you know matrix to uh, kind of make an evaluation okay so i hope that this small discussion on pe is helpful should you have any problem reach out to me at ankur.k@finstudyclub.com happy to help